Hello everyone, uh, my name is Joe and I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about my final topic which is uh, balance and wisdom. And just a little bit on why I ended up choosing balance instead of like a specific part of my life or a specific person or anything like that is you know, when I was going through the different areas of my life and what's important to me, I kept coming back to this idea of balance and how it could apply to all of these different areas of my life and that's kind of why I wanted to use uh, this idea, this topic, is because I think it really can apply to all the areas of my life that are important and not just one specifically. So to start off, the main idea of what I want to get across essentially is balance is the key to achieving peace in every aspect of your life, whether that be work, uh, whatever your relationships are at, uh, or personal with yourself. So I think, at least I know for me, and I'm sure with a lot of people, these are the three main areas of your life where you um, basically deal with. Uh, everyone's gonna have, you know, we're gonna have jobs or a career. You interact with different people, whether it's family, friends, your significant other, and you're always interacting with yourself and dealing with things that you're going through. So where I've been getting a lot of my ideas behind this and most of my info is from this researcher, his name is R.J. Sternberg, and he's kind of a juggernaut when it comes to all this research on wisdom and trying to define wisdom from this perspective using balance almost as a theory to define it. And the way he ends up defining it in his, one of his papers is the balance theory defines wisdom as the use of one's intelligence, creativity, common sense, and knowledge, and as mediated by positive ethical values towards the achievement of a common good through a balance among intrapersonal, interpersonal, and extrapersonal interests. So intrapersonal being uh, interests of yourself and with you, interpersonal obviously being between people, so your interactions with whoever it is that's in your life, as well as extrapersonal is more of a, your community, the people that are around you, and kind of society as a whole. And so the first one I want to start off with is balancing your work or your career, whatever it is that you're doing. And so the first uh, quote I have up here that actually came from the Tao, it's Tao chapter 9, and it says, filling a cup to the brim is not as good as stopping in time. Staying constantly sharpened can wear out the blade. One cannot protect a home full of jewels. Position and prestige lead to arrogance and eventual downfall. When your work is done, gently withdraw. This is the natural way. And so, I really like this quote specifically because it, it gets at the idea of finding that middle ground and finding a balance between doing too much and doing too little um, with your work and your career. So like when it talks about uh, one cannot protect a home full of jewels or position and prestige leads to your arrogance and downfall. It's about not living in excess because we're all, whenever we're in a certain position in our career or in whatever job that we're doing, we want to advance ourselves obviously. We want to get that promotion, we want to get a raise, we want to impress our boss. We want to um, basically advance ourselves, but you still have to keep in mind as we're doing this to not not get consumed by that idea of excess or always wanting more, that gimme, gimme, gimme attitude, and that sometimes what you have is just enough and what you should be doing is do what's required of you and your work, and then just basically learn to let go. And that's what it's talking about. When your work is done, withdraw, just let things go as they should, so do what's required of you, and not constantly be trying to improve yourself, I guess, in a sense. So the next one I wanted to touch on was, uh, again, balance in relationships. And the main thing I want to get, um, I want to get across uh, from this is the idea of balancing uh, inaction with action. Because we all have different relationships with people in our lives, uh, whether it's a significant other or our family or our friends. And we all know that there are certain highs and lows in every single one of those. So there's going to be ups and downs. It's basically like a roller coaster. And the idea is to recognize that those things are going to happen and not necessarily let uh, the highs or the lows define what your relationship with that person actually is because it's not the whole story. One specific instance isn't the entire story of, of you or that person. And the last thing is finding that middle ground between you know, the different relationships you have, because all of us have more than one person in our lives that's important to us or people that care about us. And so not being consumed by any one relationship, not putting your heart and soul, basically all of you, into one relationship. Um, you want to 
you want to basically try and avoid that because there, if you have more than one person in your life, you don't want to neglect the other people that are important to you simply because there's one specific person that you think is more important than someone else that you might care about. And then lastly uh, is personal balance, which this can obviously this can be physical, it can be mental, or it can be emotional. And with physical, that just deals with um, obviously keeping um, keeping in mind on how your physical body can really affect both your mind and your emotions. If you're not uh, leading a healthy life, or if you're not uh, taking care of yourself from a physical aspect, it can start to affect uh, things like your um, mental ability, decision making, or you know how you feel or how you can control your emotions and. As far as the mental balance part, you know, the mental side of everything goes, um, we all have stress in our lives and we all deal with uh, certain things that can affect us from a psychological standpoint that people may not see. And so as best you can, as best each of us can, in trying to deal with that and trying to find what it is that we can do to kind of clear our minds of whatever it is that we're dealing with and finding that, finding that balance can um, help us have a clear mind and unclouded mind and make better decisions for ourselves and for others. And one of the quotes that I actually don't have it up here, but that kind of exemplifies what I was talking about with this is from the Buddha when he's talking to one of his disciples and one of his, his disciples is basically saying, well, you live in excess, why, um, why do you get to do all of this or you can't, you can't empathize with us, you've never been where we've, at, we've been at, so why should we listen to you? And he says to him, I too have slept on nails, I've stood with my eyes open to the sun and the hot sands beside the Ganges. I've eaten so little food that you couldn't fill one fingernail with the amount I ate each day. Whatever Assassin practices under the sun human beings have done, I too have done. Through them all, I have learned that fighting against oneself through such practices is not the way. And so he's telling us that basically he can emphasize or empathize with um, all his disciples and all these other people because he's gone through the same thing. He knows what it feels like and so he can, like Victoria was saying, he can get down onto their level and help them as much as he can. Um, and he's learned, and what he's saying is he's learned that essentially, and this is where he kind of creates his idea of the middle way, is he learns that, you know, starving yourself or making, you know, hurting your physical body, hurting your um, mental health or anything or, you know, with the stresses that you have, not dealing with those is not the way to when you know he obviously wants to achieve nirvana but it's not the way to find peace with yourself or with other people it's about balancing that out with also the other extreme obviously not living extravagant or living lavishly it's finding that um, balance in between the two and so what this looks like for me like i said i picked this more because i think it can apply a lot to what i'm going to be doing and with my life as i move on and so for me, um, as I move on to the next chapter of my life, it's more of obviously being mindful of my health because as from having played soccer for over 16 years now, and now not really doing that anymore, it was kind of easy for me to not be mindful of my physical health because it kind of just, I was required to be and have good health and basically be mindful of that. So it's important that I keep, you know, keep with that as well as you know, moving on to grad school as well as beyond that, um, there's going to be a lot of things, you know, a lot of work, a lot of things that I have to do with class and things going on. And it's important that I still remember to take time that, to relax and basically have some sort of leisure um, to balance out um, the stress with um, basically to improve, improve myself and improve my health and keep, keep me motivated in a sense. And then lastly, with uh, moving on with uh, next chapter in my life, a lot of times when we move on from one stage to the next or whatever it is, uh, a lot of people, the first step is like high school to college and now we have like going from college to whether it's your job or in the grad school, sometimes we can lose sight or forget about the people that were important to us in the previous stage of our life or they sort of fall by the wayside sometimes. And for me, it's important that, because I know there are people in my life that um, that were important to me uh, in previous stages of my life that I kind of lost contact with or I didn't really um, stay connected with and I think it's important for me going into this next next chapter that I don't lose sight of that with the people that I have now um, which again that's the last thing as far as moving on what it would mean like for me 
to keep balance in my life. And then this last quote I have up here that I actually really liked, it's from the Dalai Lama, and it says, every day, think as you wake up, today I am fortunate to be alive, I have a precious human life, I am not going to waste it. And I really enjoy this one because I think it applies to all the three areas that I was just talking about. Um, so from a work standpoint, you know, you wake up, you might have a job that you don't really like, you don't enjoy the people that you're around or what you have to do, your boss is a pain or whatever it is, but think as you wake up, you know, I'm alive, I'm a human being, I have this opportunity to make a difference today in some, some aspect, even if I don't necessarily enjoy it the most, I sh I'm not going to waste it. I'm not going to sit here and complain and sit here and wallow in my self-pity type thing. Um, from a relationship standpoint, you know, you might wake up, you might have had a fight the previous night with, say, your, fit, you know, your parents, your significant other or a close friend, you have, maybe you haven't been talking in a while, whatever the case may be. Think of, you know, think as you wake up, well, I could, can again, sit here and wallow my self-pity, I could sit here and think about what the other person did wrong or why I'm right. Instead, maybe I should think about the fact that I have this opportunity to actually clear the air with whatever, whoever it is that I have a fight with um, and kind of move past whatever it is that I'm dealing with because um, I have this opportunity, I'm not going to waste it. And then from a uh, personal standpoint, again, it's thinking that, hey, I'm, I'm a human, I'm living, I am, as, I am as important as every other person is, they're as important as every other person is that woke up today. Because some people don't have that opportunity to wake up and actually make a difference. Um, so the fact that I actually, again, was given the opportunity today and because I don't know if tomorrow's guaranteed, I'm not going to waste today. And so for me, that's kind of just how I look at all of this and how it would be important to me. And so something to leave all of you with, um, if you bought into any of this or think that you would buy into any of this, I would encourage you to look at the different areas of your life that are important to you and think of how you could apply any of these concepts to it and maybe better that aspect of your life, whether it is your career, relationships, or yourself personally. If not, that's okay too. And thanks for listening, that's all I got for you.